Hi friends. It's a hot one out here today, but I have something to help. Ah. Sitting in front of a fan on a hot day sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But you know, a fan doesn't actually cool the temperature in a room. In fact, a fan could make the room hotter because of the heat from the motor. Fans don't cool the air, they just move the hot air around. So why do they make us feel so much better? The fan, or a breeze, moves air against our skin, which causes perspiration to evaporate faster than it would on its own. Evaporation requires energy, and that energy is heat. As our body heat is used to evaporate sweat droplets into vapor, then we cool down. A fan or a breeze speeds up that process. In the Bible, the word for wind is the same word for breath and spirit. And I was thinking about how the wind from a fan doesn't change the room temperature, but it still helps us to deal with the heat. It's kind of like how God's spirit doesn't necessarily change our circumstances, but still helps us to deal with them and gives us some comfort in the midst of them. I love the passage from Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. It says, But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God, through the prophet, does not say if you pass through the waters or walk through the fires, but when you do. God acknowledges that life is not always easy. There will be failure and pain and danger and sorrow. But in the strength of God's Spirit, those things don't completely overwhelm or consume us. They may knock us down. They may slow us down. They may make us sweat. <laughs> But God's Spirit is constantly blowing over us to cool us down, to give us comfort, so that we can have strength to carry on. A preacher had decided to retire from ministry, and so one Sunday he explained his decision to the congregation. He said, I wear two hearing aids and trifocal glasses. I have replaced two knees and a hip and my mouth is full of dentures. It seems to me, he concluded, that the Lord is telling me it's time to retire. After the service, a blue-haired woman said to him, Reverend, you have misinterpreted what the Lord has been saying to you. He's not telling you it's time to retire. He's telling you that if you carry on, he will keep you patched up. <laughs> When the currents of culture or peer pressure or keeping up with the Joneses cause us to drift away from God, when rising stress and anxiety threaten to overwhelm us, when we get burned by temptation or by the actions of others, when we stare hopelessness in the face, we need to keep going, to carry on. If we keep going, God will keep us patched up. If we keep going, God will keep blowing his spirit over us to give us the strength that we need in the heat of the moment. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again tomorrow.